In this video, we're going to look at the principles of software-defined networks and the OpenFlow protocol. Let's get started. In this video, we're looking at software-defined networking. Software-defined networking refers to a concept where the forwarding behavior of a router can be changed through the configuration, as opposed to implemented in hardware that really only performs one behavior. We're also going to look at OpenFlow. OpenFlow is a protocol that implements software-defined networking. In practice, OpenFlow has become so dominant in the marketplace that most people use software-defined networking and OpenFlow interchangeably. So let's look at what we mean by generalized forwarding. We have a packet arriving with its header values. And note we're talking about the whole header here, not just the destination address. The router is going to look in its forwarding table, see what fields that packet matches, and take the corresponding forwarding action. This could be destination-based forwarding, as with traditional routers, but it can also match other fields. In addition to matching other fields, the router may be configured to take actions other than simply forwarding the packet, including dropping the packet, logging the packet, or even modifying the packet on the fly. Let's look at our flow table in a little more detail. As we've said, these are pairs of matches and actions. A flow is a particular set of header field values. Note that in practice, these are drawn from both the network layer header and the transport layer header. The forwarding then are the fields that define the actions to take when a flow rule is matched. Note that unlike our traditional IP behavior, this is an exact match, not a longest prefix match. If the action required for a particular packet is too complex for the router to perform, it can be configured to send this off to the controller, which is the server that configures the flow rules in the first place. If a packet matches more than one rule, the respective priority of those rules will determine which action is taken. The router will also keep track of how many packets and bytes match each of the rules. Here's some example rules. The first one says, for any packet with any source address and a destination address starting with 3.4, forward it out link 2. The next one says, if the packet has a source starting with 1.2, no matter what its destination is, it should be dropped. And the last one says, for any packet coming from 10.1.2.3, send it to the controller for handling. So let's see how OpenFlow implements the idea of software-defined networking. The flow table entries consist of the pattern for matching, the action to be taken, and the statistics on how many packets match each rule. The matches can be performed on header fields all the way from the physical i.e. which port did it come in on, the layer 2 Ethernet header fields, the layer 3 fields, and the layer 4 transport fields. So while so far we've just been discussing routers in terms of layer 3 headers, this generalized forwarding applies across multiple layers. The actions available closely match those we've been discussing so far, including forwarding as usual, dropping, modifying particular fields, or sending the packet off to the controller for further action. And then in the statistics we have the packet and byte counters. It's certainly possible that we don't care about most of these fields, and so we can just leave those with wildcard matches. In this case, we're just handling traffic for one IP destination, and the action is to forward it out port 6. So this acts just like destination-based forwarding that we're used to seeing in layer 3 routers. We could also use this to implement a firewall rule, such as this example, which is dropping all traffic destined for TCP port 22, which is the default SSH port. Another firewall rule implements a block list, where we're dropping all traffic from a particular IP address. At layer 2, we could also implement destination-based forwarding, this time based on the destination MAC address. One goal of this software-defined networking approach is to unify different types of devices. The traditional router performs a match against the destination address only, and it's a longest prefix type match, and the action is to forward the packet out an interface. A layer 2 switch, on the other hand, which we haven't looked at in detail yet, but it also does destination-based forwarding based on the MAC addresses, and it has an alternate behavior where if it doesn't know where to send the frame, it will flood it out all the interfaces. So we can also do this with an SDN. As I noted before, we typically refer to the OpenFlow devices as an SDN switch, even though they're capable of performing operations at layers 2, 3, and 4. Another very common device is the firewall, which makes permit or deny decisions based on various header fields. And as we saw, this can also be performed with the OpenFlow switch. Lastly, we have network address translation, which we've already looked at in some detail. And again, the SDN switch can perform this matching and rewrite the necessary fields in the header to behave as a NAT. So here's an example where we have three SDN switches in the network, which are running the OpenFlow protocol and being controlled by a single OpenFlow controller. Based on the unified view of the network that the controller has, it can deploy OpenFlow tables to the three routers to create a network-wide behavior. 
For example, in this case, we're seeing that traffic flowing between routers S3 and S2 is sent via router S1, instead of taking the direct link between those two routers. In this case, we're doing that by matching both the source and destination prefixes and forwarding them out to port 3 on S3. At S1, we also have rules to add matching the ingress port with the source and destination prefixes and forward the packets out port 4. At S2, the hosts are on two different ports, and so we have the two different corresponding actions. To summarize, we have this match plus action generalization that allows us much more flexibility than the traditional IP longest prefix matching behavior. This is both because it can match more header fields across more layers, and also because we have a greater variety of actions available. This lets us get closer to what we might call a programmable network, where the actions of the network can be much more customized to the individual applications and users that are flowing across it. That wraps up our discussion of software-defined networks. In the next discussion, we'll be talking about middle boxes. See you then. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it to be useful, please click the like button. To be notified when more videos are posted for this class, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell.